We now have the latest updates coming in from Israel. Two women have been shot dead in the occupied West Bank. Another one has sustained serious injuries. Israeli soldiers rushed to the scene after reports of a car crash. But upon arrival, they discovered that the women had been shot. Tensions have been flaring up between Israel and Palestine. We have been telling you this over the last few days. We have been getting you the constant updates. The conflict now has spread to Lebanon as well. Last night, Lebanon fired 34 rockets at Israel. 25 were intercepted by the air defense systems. And today, Israel has retaliated. Israel's military targeted Hamas camps in southern Lebanon. Residents around the area of Rashidiyeh refugee camp reported hearing three loud blasts. It is the second most populated Palestinian camp in Lebanon. Listen in to what the residents had to say. We are sleeping at night and we suddenly heard a sound. We woke up and the roof started to fall on us. My brothers were sleeping here. We ran outside and sharp nil soil and stones started flying around us. Israeli missiles also rained down in different areas of Gaza. Have a look at these visuals now. Houses and vehicles stood destroyed. Walls and windows were blasted by the powerful explosions. There was dirt, smashed glass windows in people's homes. Israel said its jets hit 10 targets, including tunnels and weapons manufacturing sites of Hamas. But this victim had a different story to tell. If I was in the car, I would have died. Money in the car can be redeemed. But what does the citizen have to do in all of this? What do the children, my two-year-old sister, my parents and siblings have to do in all of this? This is a residential area. There's nothing here but a home, crops, a building and some agricultural land. Two days ago, tensions flared up between Israel and Palestine, bringing them on the brink of a war. But now Lebanon is also getting involved. Last night's attack was the biggest since 2006 when Israel fought a war with the Hezbollah movement. Is the whirlpool effect pulling in the neighborhood as well? Let's not forget how it all started. Two days ago, Israeli police stormed into the Al-Aqsa Mosque in the pre-dawn hours in the holy month of Ramzan. And what triggered this raid? Well, there were different sides to the story. Israel blames it on the worshippers. It says masked agitators locked themselves inside the holy site, that they carried fireworks, sticks and stones. So the police was forced to enter the compound. But the worshippers say something else, that they were praying when the police marched in and started hurling stun grenades at them. More than 350 people were arrested and removed from the mosque. But the storm did not pass. Violence erupted once again in the Al-Aqsa Mosque, this time in the late evening hours. Police entered the compound once again and tried to evacuate the worshippers. They threw stun grenades and fired rubber bullets. Why was this happening? Well, the Israeli police says worshippers were hiding weapons that they were carrying firearms. So my question is, where are these weapons? Did the police recover any firearms from the worshippers? No evidence has been found, as per reports. The police got a hold of firecrackers at the most. Instead, we have videos of the police beating up the worshippers, of people being hit by stun grenades, of the injured being carried away on stretchers. After all, it is the Israeli police we are talking about. The one that is controlled by a hardliner like Itamar ben Gwir. But it did not end there. In response to the raid, Hamas fired rockets into Israel from the Gaza Strip. Seven to nine rockets were fired. Sirens on Israel's border were blaring. The country's Iron Dome intercepted most of these rockets. And then the Lebanese missiles came. The exchange triggered a rebuke from the Prime Minister, 
Benjamin Netanyahu. This is what he said. Recently, I have made it clear that our enemies should not misjudge us. The internal debate in Israel will not prevent us from taking action against them wherever and whenever necessary. All of us, without exception, are united on this. We have no intention of changing the status quo on the Temple Mount. We want the situation to be calm and we will take strong action against extremists who use violence there. Regarding the aggression against us on other fronts, we will strike our enemies and they will pay the price for any act of aggression. Netanyahu's coalition is filled with right-wingers and hardliners. I already told you about Ben Gouer. But you see, he is not the only one. There are hardliners on both the sides. Are they provoking a third intifada? For those unversed, an intifada is basically a rebellion, a widespread resistance movement. Israel has seen at least two of them. The first one started in the year 1987. It ended in 1993. There were protests, violent riots and rocket attacks. Thousands of Palestinians and hundreds of Israeli troops lost their lives. And the second one came in the year 2000. This one ended in 2005. Are things headed towards a third intifada? The Al-Aqsa Mosque was raided twice in a day. Protests broke out. Rockets and missiles rained down in multiple parts. And now Lebanon is also involved. Will the tensions die down? Or will there be another widespread uprising? We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.